What's up everybody, my name's Chance, and today we're going to be playing Friday Night Magic at home using challenger decks that uh, Wizards of the Coast has provided everybody to use, and these decks are really some awesome top tier decks, and really, really fun to play with, and uh, we're not going to be diving in looking at each deck individually, but I will go over each deck at the face value here. So Allied Fires is going to be a Jeskai Fires deck, a whole lot of Planeswalkers where you're trying to get them down and trying to gain them to life, and of course use Fires of Invention to play out your spells as uh, promptly as you can. Next we have Cavalcade Charge, which you guessed it is a Cavalcade of Calamity deck mixed with some Torbrand and some Embercleave Madness. This deck is absolutely dominating this event. If you're looking to get through your two victories quickly, I definitely recommend Mono Red as you're, you're going to be able to just pick up those matches, like I said, within maybe 10 minutes of one another, right? Get through them easy, easy, easy. Moving us along, we have Golgari Final Adventures. This is an adventure deck with Lucky Clover, Edgewall Innkeeper, some... Uh, some really awesome cards and key things, and I think this is actually going to be your best bet to beat the Mono Red deck, as it does have a lot of cheap life gain sources and a lot of interaction, considering all your adventure creatures have those two spells, right? Instead of just being one single creature, you have the, the versatility of using either the adventure spell or getting the creature down, and I think that really helps up against Mono Red. And last but not least, we have Simic Flash, Flash of Ferocity. It is fantastic. I think for those of you that are looking to enjoy the event and play a deck that has good early and late game capacity, as well as a lot of interaction, this is pretty good. You can counter spells, you can get in your own creatures at flash speed. It allows you to keep up mana on your turn, so you're not really worried about what your opponent plays on their turn, because you'll have your counter spells, right? You'll have your creatures, you'll have your backups on their turn, rather than having to play it all out on your turn and guessing what they may have. So... All that being said and out of the way, we are gonna go ahead and jot jot. <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and jump right into the matches. I hope you all enjoy the video today. If you do, please be sure to leave a like down below and a comment in the comment section if you have any suggestions on this video, future videos, or past videos. And last but not least, certainly if you enjoy the content, please be sure to subscribe. It's a free way to support the channel as well as give you an update if you click on that bell icon every time I go live, which is generally 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and put up a video nightly, which is generally around 9 o'clock or so. That's what I've been shooting for. Again, thanks everybody for watching, and we're going to go and hop right into our matches. Alrighty, Allied Fires for our first deck up against Huns. Now, I wonder how they're going to do this, if they're just going to make sure that you don't play a mirror match, or what. Um, I don't think this is fantastic, but we can at least get, hopefully, to four mana with the Omen of the Sea and Scrying 2 and Drawing, which will allow us to get to Enigmatic, and then we can swap out this Enigmatic and try to get to the Kenrith. Um, so, a lot of these are some really top tier decks. Ooh, our opponent's playing the, the aggro mono red. I am most excited for that deck, I, I do have to say. Um, super, super excited. Um, so we actually want to get down Swift Water Cliffs first, so we can get down the Omen of the Sea for sure. We'll worry about the Temple of Triumph come later, but that'll at least offset a little bit of the aggro, hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> We're going to be swinging back in with another Fervent and following up with Runaway Steamkin. Devening Clarion is definitely something we want to be casting, but for now we're going to get down the Omen of the Sea on their turn, and then we can follow up with an Interplanar Beacon, which will give us that Deafening Clarion. So, we'll at least be able to wipe our opponent's creatures, which is good. Good, good, good that they, uh, they have included that. Now, we're not going to be running through each of the decks and all that, as I said in the beginning, but I do still think and advise each of you, before you go select which deck you'd like to play, to at least take a look at all the decks. So this is super unfortunate. We're about to take six damage here, which is again very, very deadly. We're gonna be all the way down to 13 health, and uh, given given what other cards this deck has in them, I'm talking about their deck. Um, this gonna be very scary, very, very scary. So, we're also playing a lot of the stage, which is gonna put that Steamkin at three health. And we'll have to hope that they don't draw into some more land or any of that. Uh, and then speaking of land, we have two off the top here. I think I am going to bottom the Swift Water Cliffs. We'll keep the Interplanar Beacon. So that way when we do cast down the Kazmina, we're getting two life off of that instead of just one. That'll also allow us to get to the Kinrith. So I think that's all good. Oh no, the Runaway Steamkin is going to be big enough to avoid getting white from the Deafening Clarion. That is definitely terrible for us. Maybe they'll use it to cast down another creature. Fingers crossed. Use that Steamkin mana. Nope. Freak. <laughs> Alright, well, we will still go ahead and Deafening Clarion because, again, that is our best course of action here. Yeah. 
They'll probably get down Torbrand this turn. Swing in, deal six damage. We're down to seven health. This uh, this mono red deck, I'm telling you, is going to be terrible for all the other decks to try and beat. There's no way of knowing what deck you're going to be up against either, so it's really, really a devastating one. We may have to play two matches with this uh, with this Jeskai deck just to make sure we get actual matches in, and it's not just mono red running us down, right? Because that is uh, that is kind of a, a bougie loss, right? Yeah, mono red is just should just dominate this stuff. So we'll get down to Kazmina. We'll stick to the plan. We'll gain two life off that. We'll go back up to nine. We'll get down a little wizard as well. Activate that. And we get a Narset. Um, I think I actually want the Winds Guard over the Temple of Triumph, so we're going to discard that. Narset is fantastic. But we might be out of luck here. They're going to create two little 1-1s, one which are going to deal 3 damage each. They're going to swing in with all their creatures. We're going to defend against the Runaway Steamkin, but I think they have enough damage to just end it regardless. Yep. So that's going to be Mono Red picking up a victory in the in the Jeskai game one. That is super unfortunate, but it is the way they go is Carnage. Again, playing the Jeskai Fires deck because, uh, well, in our first match, we went up against Mono Red, and of course, that's no fun for anybody. So we're going to be playing another match. I do kind of like this with the Sealy into a Kazmina. Hopefully we can get there. Or uh, B-square, I guess. So we'll probably lead off with a Swiftwater into uh, Steam Vents into an Inner Planer. And again, Mono Red. That's, uh, that's two matches in a row. So maybe every Jeskai Fires goes up against Mono Red. If so, that's kind of a yikes because not exactly the most even matchups. Or it could just be that everyone's playing Mono Red in this in this uh, game mode because they know that Mono Red is going to be the deck to beat. So either which way, we will still count this as our second Jeskai Fires deck because I don't want to be playing this deck all day. I'm not the biggest fan of Jeskai Fires. I actually want to play Mono Red myself because again, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> How are you supposed to keep up with this? You know? How even? There's a time wipe, which is of course going to be fantastic if we can manage to get there. We're going to throw down the Sahili and hopefully that will encourage our opponent to go for that instead of our face. Yeah, of course it may not. But we don't have many other options, right? Nope, they're, they're still just going to be going for the face. <laughs> but you, you can't really blame them. You can't blame them. They, after all, uh, wizards are giving people three rare cards for this, two of them actually, for winning two matches, so you can't be mad at people. And they got the cavalcade off of that. They're instead going to go ahead and cast the other light of the stage, get down the Scorch Spitter, and then of course play the cavalcade come next turn. Probably with the, uh, what is that, the Ten Street? Yeah. Okie dokie. <laughs> we're going to do all that we can to not die here. So we're going to gain one life there. We're going to cast in this. We're actually going to discard the Kazmina, I think. And we're going to call it good. <laughs> oh, boy. What is the next deck we get to play? I can't remember the order of the four, but we are just going left to right with the matches. So here comes Cavalcade. We're going to be... Oh, my goodness. We're going to be taking what... I think more damage than what we can actually defend against realistically here, so. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. We defend here and here, and we're still taking four damage. So this mono red deck, just vicious, just absolutely vicious. Um, yeah, I don't know. For, for just got fires to have to beat that, it, it would have to draw perfect, and mono red would have to draw really terrible. Slidak. So, fortunately enough for us, the next deck in the queue was actually the Mono Red deck. So we're we're gonna get to play some of this ourselves. And this looks a little flooded actually with all these lands, but I'm gonna keep it thanks to the Cavalcade plus Scorch Spitter. Now, if we lose with this Mono Red deck, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be a little bit salty in the fact that we were sitting there talking about how how indestructible it was, how strong it is, you know, all this and that. Um, but of course, our opponent may have drawn better. It looks like the bottle red does always go up against the Jeskai Fires, which is kind of unfortunate when you think about it, really. Um, we'll go ahead and get down a Cavalcade of Calamity, and this way our Scorch Spitter can deal 2-3 damage, all on its lonesome. Our opponent does have, of course, the Omen of the Sea. More than likely, that's what they're holding up here.
Yep, there it is. All right, so we know that we can't let them get too too deep in, otherwise it's going to be absolutely just destructive for us. Absolutely destructive. <clears throat> of course, this will be the turn where they would have the mana for, uh, what's it called? Or next turn, actually, will be the turn where they have the mana for uh, the wipe, the deafening clarion, right? Which is why we're going to play a Chandra, because she sort of works around that, and the fact that she's a planeswalker won't take that damage and still gives us plenty of damage to deal back to our opponent. So, opponent's going to be going down to 11 health already, and then next turn we can get down to a brand and pretty much finish him off, I'm thinking. We'll see, though. Narset is going to be gaining them another bit of life. So they're up to 13. How much damage do we do? 3, 4... I think we actually do have enough. They do have a Deafening Clarion there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna chance it. I'm gonna play the Torbrand. Torbrand doesn't die to Deafening Clarion anyway, so I'll attack to the face, three attackers, and that should be good. <clears throat> so three, six, nine, twelve, and three, six, nine. Yep, mono red, really good. Really, 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 really good. Min Uxto? Like to tuxedo, but men instead? I don't know. It's a little weird. Um, <clears throat> this hand's hurting a little bit for mana, but we do have Light of the Stage to hopefully get us there, so we're going to be keeping it and trying to get there. Oh, look at this. We're not playing Jeskai Fires, actually. We're playing a different deck, so that's that's good. That Mono Red doesn't always go up against Jeskai Fires. You actually have a chance to get it with other things as well. Good, good. <clears throat> well, another Fervor is hard to say no to. So this is actually the Simic Flash deck, right? That's what we're going to have to be facing off against here. So we'll go ahead and get down both Fervor and Champions. This way, if they do Simic Flash in anything, they could, of course, just quench it. Yep, it's always a possibility as well. We are still going to light up the stage, though, try and draw out some more cards here. Oops, next to damage, and then, and then light up the stage. Right, right. <clears throat> All right, so we got a Mountain and a Bone Crusher. I think it would just go straight up for the two damage off the Bone Crusher, see if they counter it. They do, they quench it once more. That's alright. Go for this damage, and then we will uh, Boulder Rush our Fervent Champion to deal a little bit more damage. <clears throat> Next turn, we can get down the Tor Brand if we want to. Of course, our opponent may have counter spells for that as well. Well, you know what they say, go big or go home, so we'll try it. Third quench, holy Jesus. <laughs> That's the way to beat Mono Red, you just start the game with three quenches. <laughs> holy cow. Alright, let's see if Chandra can land. No? There's the Sinister. Oh boy. Oh boy. Simic Flash. Or should I say Simic Counter, because I don't see any Flash creatures, actually. We'll get down to Rimrock Knight. Maybe the deck that beats Mono Red, though. Realistically. You really don't expect your opponent to have that many counters in their starter hand. Well, I want to get Chandra down. I want to get these, these two little elementals. Frilled Mystic, there it is. <coughs> now, this is actually okay. Frilled Mystic is more than likely going to block against our Rimrock. Which is a fine trade, I guess. So next to blockers. Frilled Mystic will block. Oh, perfect. So then we just rim rock here. Boom. Boom. Four damage still gets into the face, and we will cast this rim rock down. So things we're looking for. Another Tor Brand, uh, more Ember Cleave. There's Tor Brand. Let's see. Can you land or do they have more counter spells? <coughs> no, you land. Holy Jesus. Oh, and then Brazen Borrower. Right, right. Alright, well, I guess it is what it is, but we are still going to be getting in with this potential damage here. Wildborn Preserver are going to be blocking the Fervent Champion. We'll get in 7 damage. Our opponent will be down to 3, but of course they can get down the Brazen Borrower. Can't defend those, so what is their course of action? How then do they get out of this one? This little pickle. Can I go to a brand plus Bone Crusher? I can indeed, so that's what we're going to be trying here. See if they have more bounce. More bouncy bouncy. No, just another creature to defend with. So 
So we will immediately try to Bone Crusher that. They'll get down another Wildborn Preserver. So they don't have any mana to pay to keep their Wildborn Preservers alive, but we took out that creature. And they will block both of the Rimrock Knights. We still have Torbrand that can deal lethal come next turn, so they have to have an answer here. Let's see. Let's see. Can the Simic deck do it? Can they do it? Torbrand, you are our hope. You are our our solemn hope. Wildborn Preserver coming on down. Oh, they still have they still have creatures. They're still in it. Who would have thought Simic Flash could keep up with Mono Red? But they did start the game with four counters, five counters, because they had the Frilled Mystic as well. Man, oh man. It's getting spicy. It's getting spicy. They're double blocking. That will get rid of the Torbran. I don't I don't think I need to plus one there. I think we can just do a one and one and that'll kill him, right? So next to damage. Oh no, I didn't. Ah! Jet, what have you done? I didn't separate the damage correctly. So we'll throw it on the fatty oops there. And in turn. No! It's all over! That was our opportunity. That was our window. This this turn was it. Oh, I guess not. They have a wave break hippocamp. That would have that would have stopped us. <laughs> Alright, my turn. No! An Embercleave! That's what we need is an Embercleave! Alright, well we have to keep on keeping on. We can't allow them... We can't let up. So let's see if they double block here. They don't. They're gonna single block. I'll take it actually. They're gonna get rid of their Spectral Sailor. Now of course the Wave Break Hippocamp is gonna help them to draw cards once they play that Brazen Borrower on our turn. We have to, again, hope for that Embercleave. Let's do it. Come on, baby. Light up the stage. Not what we wanted. But I'll go ahead and play it. We'll go ahead and play it. Bone Crusher. And 10th Street Dodger. Yes! Yes! <laughs> That's victory. Alrighty, 2-0 Mono Red. Sim Flash, though, gave us a run for our money. Alrighty, Dino Magic. And we are playing it with the Golgari deck now. The Golgari Adventures. Oh, that's not keepable. <laughs> Who do you think I am? You're sending me some kind of shit like that. Um, I'm... Actually, going to get rid of the Order of Midnight, I think. That might not be the right play. I want the Edgewall Keeper, Edgewall Innkeeper down first and foremost. Oh, it's Mono Red. <laughs> and a Mono Red here, and a Mono Red there. Here a Mono Red, there a Mono. You know what? The song doesn't play out as well as what you'd hope, but y'all get the point. It's everywhere, okay? Old McDonald had one. And it spread like a disease. Now, we can Edgewall Innkeeper and Disfigure here. Or we can get down one of these other creature chairs. Yeah, you know what? We're going to go Edgewall Innkeeper into a Falmir Knight. Get that card draw off. I think that's what we really, really are going to want and need for this edge wall keeper just gets Kaputsky. 10 Street Dodger. Okay, okay. And swing in. Alright, well, we trade the Falmir Knight for the 10 Street Dodger, I think. Of course, they have things like Torbrand and all that as well. So maybe that's what they want us to do. But with Cavalcade down, it's going to be hard. And Order of Midnight can't block. Spit and Swordmaster can, but it's, it's a 2 1 as well. All right, let's do this. Let's get it out of the equation. Oh, do they Rimrock Knight it? No, they Rimrock Knight the Fervent. Get in the extra damage, right, right. All right. This turn, we can play the Disfigure plus get down a Smitten or an Order. Probably get down a Smitten, trade it out, and then we can use Order to get back something, right? All right, so then we we'll want this. Want this. Another Edgewall Innkeeper is fantastic, but again, I think I want the mana for the Disfigure. So, before their attack phase is when we'll be trying to cast it. Bone Crusher Giant is going to be their only play this turn, so we will go ahead and Disfigure their Fervorant. That'll cut off their damage for this turn at least. 
Now we can go Edge Roll Innkeeper for sure. I think we just want to get that down. And sure, we'll go ahead and play a Spin Sword Master. This will give us a lot of card draw, so we'll be able to restock our hand a little bit. Get through these lands, I guess. <laughs> and we'll finally get in one point of damage. Now, if only we can swing in with our Spit and Swordmaster, we might actually be able to gain some life. We shall see, though. We shall see. Runaway Steam King coming down for our opponent, and they have one extra mana, which is going to go into a Scorch Spitter. All right, so we can realistically swing in with our Spit and Swordmaster, and even even if they decide to trade there, that's, that's fine by us. So I think we will do that first and foremost, swing in with the Smitten Swordmaster. Two life gain, oh, fantastic. You know, you know how much of a relief that is? All right, so we're gonna first do Order of Midnight to get back another Smitten Swordmaster. And then I think I want to go here, play this down as a creature, which will draw us two more cards, right? There's a Lucky Clover, that's fantastic as well. Um, I was actually thinking about going ahead and playing this, but if we have a Lucky Clover, then I might want to wait until Lucky Clover is down and then play that. Of course, we have a fine finality, so we can always replay it. So yeah, I think we should just go ahead and do it while we can. We're back up to 18 health, though. So maybe this Golgari deck is actually well-suited enough to deal with the Mono Red, although two Cavalcade of Calamities is certainly not what we want. For sure, for sure, not what we want. So... We actually take this damage. We do, we do. They have two mana, which means a Rimrock Knight's probably coming down, but thankfully for us, Rimrock Knights can't defend, so we'll be a okay there. We could Finality now on our next turn and actually get rid of all of their creatures, and then all they'd have left is Cavalcade, but it would also get rid of all of our creatures, so maybe we don't want to do that. Let's play this. Do want a Lucky Clover down, but at the same time, like I said, Finality is just so good play this down we can't finality until next turn they did get the bone crusher giant down if we finality the only thing we're able to keep is the order of midnight all right all right I know game I know all right well Let's swing in before we finality. We're not going to deal as much damage directly to their face, but we're going to gain life, and I think that's more important. Um, so this is actually going to kill everything. Now we're just both top decking. <laughs> now I've ran through more more lands, so I'm hoping that that will allow me to get better cards. Not of the Evan Legion. I'm gonna keep that actually. I think that's good. It doesn't doesn't really play well with our Lucky Clover and Smitten Swordmaster, but it, it has its own place, right? Chandra. Oh no! With the double cavalcade, that's terrible for us. But we're actually gonna allow those one ones to just get through. We're gonna allow all this damage, I think, to get through. Of course, we could defend with our Smitten Swordmaster up against the Rimrod Knight. Uh. No, it's better. It's better like this. You gotta go with your gut chance. It's terrible, I know. But once we get down this Knight of the Ebon Legion, then we'll have something that can defend against that Rimrock Knight and not die, and we'll have Smitten Swordmaster still gaining us life. So that's that's the idea that we're going for here, right? That's the hope and the dream. We have gotten severely flooded, so you know, I'll have to remember that as well. Although, can can they kill us? They're gonna deal Four damage. Oh, they can. They have lethal. Ah! Beaten Mono Red. It's it's like him, it's like almost impossible. <laughs> oh goodness gracious me alive! This is absolutely terrible. Yep. So that's going to be a GG on a game one with Golgari. But I think I think Golgari is your best bet. Seeing this game, I think if I could have played th some things differently, maybe we could have gotten there. Maybe we could have gotten there. Alrighty, Ichin Ichinino? I don't, I'm not quite sure. Either way, we're on to the Simic Flash deck now. That's right, we're playing Simic Flash. 
counters galore, creatures coming in at instant speed, everything you could possibly want, right? I'm actually going to keep that island so we can get to the Thassa and all our other double blue mana cards, such as Sinister, that that nonsense, right? So, beautiful thing about this, this deck is you pretty much don't have to play anything on your own turn. You just wait for your opponent's turn, and then you play stuff. Uh, now, I will go ahead and get down this green mana for the Night Pack Ambusher come turn 4, but I think Quench will be be pretty good against whatever they're about to do here. Narset, yeah. Just gonna quench that right on out of there. No need for that. And then Brownborn, of course, is gonna be getting in for the 3 damage. Now, come their turn, why do I rather play a Night Pack? Night? Night? <laughs> Night Pack Ambusher or Thassa's Intervention, their Kazmina. I think I'd rather have the Night Pack Ambusher, honestly. Sure, Kazmina, they're going to be able to create a 2 2 little wizard, but it's not going to be able to defend against both of our creatures, and that means on this next turn, I'll be able to cast Thassa's as well as Wildborn Preserver. Right? I'll take both of these and take out this Kazmina. And then of course at the end of our turn we'll also gain a little wolf for having not played anything. Now we have Thassa's Intervention if we need to at the max. And if not then we can of course get down the Wildborn Preserver as well. Another Kazmina. So we'll pay one here. Yep, that's fine. Increase our Brownborn Cutthroat, counter the spell, and we're going to get down a Wildborn Preserver. So Simic Flash is really, really good against all the other decks, it seems, so far. This is just crushing Just Got Fires, I'd, I'd have to say. So we're going to go next. We're going to swing all in, except for with the Wildborn Preserver. Three attackers. Our opponent's going to go 2 2 into the 6 5. They're still going to take 7 damage and be down to 11. Now, of course, they can have a time wipe, so that's what we were like really, really worried about here. We'll go ahead and get down to Thornward Falls, though. If they have time wipe, that is, that is going to be the thing to beat. <clears throat> now, I will pay 1 here. I'll pay 1 Forest. This way, if we opt, if they do play a time white, we opt immediately, try to find a Sinister Sabotage or a Quench, something along those lines, right? Fires of Invention. Okay, there it is. There's there's the card, and they don't have another land to get to the time white, so what do they play here then to keep themselves alive in this in this moment, right? Deafening Clarion. Let's see if we can opt and find something that we may, may be able to use. Another Night Pack Ambusher. Uh, as great as it is, we can't actually... Oh, okay, Ichi... Ichi Nino gonna be conceding it out there. And, uh, yeah, what a, what a deck. Simic Flash. So, overall thoughts on the event so far. Um, obviously Mono Red destroys things if you draw good. If you draw bad, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be feeling it. But if you draw good, Mono Red is so, so very hard to beat with Allied Fires and Final Adventures, although I think Final Adventures may have the best shot at it. Don't get me wrong, that Flash deck gave us a pretty good run for our money, but I think that might have just been because they had five counters, right? And if you counter any five cards immediately off the rip, well, that's pretty much your opponent's entire hand. Of course, that's your entire hand as well, which is why they kind of sort of fizzled out there and we were able to come back. So, all that being said, what was my favorite deck? I really enjoyed the Final Adventure. I think that was a fun, fun deck. Um, obviously, winning is fun, so if you're just looking to win the event, uh, Mono Red is definitely a way to go. I think the Simic deck is probably the most interactive, though, and uh, it's it's got room. You know, I think everybody will find something in one of these four decks that they can really, really enjoy. The only thing about the event is, again, you put a you put a Cavalcade deck in here, you put a Mono Red deck in here, so obviously people that are just looking to get those cards are going to be playing just that, so there's going to be a ton of Mono Red running around, so just be be wary of all of that. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed these events every week. They come out with magic and uh, you know, we're going to keep on doing them. So again, stay home. That's what this event is inspired by is keeping everybody at home and still being able to play magic, still being able to do your Friday night magic at home and just play some different decks with maybe some people that you don't know, which is perfectly fine as well. 
So again, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like down below, comment in the comment section if you have any suggestions on this video, future videos, or past videos. And last but not least, if you enjoy the content here, please remember to subscribe, hit that bell notification, or the bell icon, I'm sorry, so you can get notifications about, you know, whenever I go live, which is generally 8-ish in the morning to around 10-ish in the morning. And then of course, we try to do these videos once a night around 9 o'clock. That's what I've been shooting for, at least here recently. So. Again, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you all have a fantastic night, morning, evening, wherever you may be, whatever time it is. I hope you have a good one. And uh, yeah, peace.